Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in this video we will begin again with testing the spirit of Jin R, this time with ramjet engines. I've reviewed the video of my development of this originally in 1.8 and we barely got to orbit with it so yeah that's going to be interesting and maybe the ramjets will help but we've had to take off some fuel in order to accommodate the extra mass so we'll see. I don't know how... Uh, in real life, of course, ramjets do not take off from runways. Uh, you have to get up to speed before lighting them. But these probably operate more like the SR-71 engines, in which case they're sort of dual mode, because they have a stationary thrust of 130 kilonewtons. So that's hopeful. Uh, they are not as efficient as the Panthers, though, so they're pretty gas-guzzling. Uh, uh, 4,000 ISP compared to 9,000, which is a huge difference. But if we can get up to speed quicker, that will make up for it. Uh, so we're going to test it out and see if it can get to orbit. And I'll talk more about uh, the old series, the stock career in 1.8, while we're at it, because it occurs to me... And if we do get up there, we want our engineer in. Um, it occurs to me that I never produced the videos for that, uh, for the part where I developed this plane. I had a stock 1.8 series as we take this out to the runway. Short of where I actually got to development of this, I decided people weren't too interested in the stock 1.8 series anymore. So I stopped making videos because it was all live streamed. And so I had a whole bunch of live stream videos of what I was doing in stock 1.8, but I ne never made it for YouTube because editing takes a long time. So I have about 64 hours of gameplay <laughs> just sitting around and included in that was the story of this particular plane. So I'll have to think about what I want to do about that. Uh, it's a little bit weird going back to 1.8 and producing videos in 1.8 when I'm also doing a stock series in 1.11, but uh, the, some of the exploits are interesting. Well, we're already rolling, so SAS on. I've added waterfall, and of course the stock waterfall effects, so I'm about to light the engines and we'll see how that looks. So I've taken out real plumes and the stock real plume configurations. Here we go. Oh, wrong engines. Whoops. Uh, that, 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 that looked nice briefly, uh, but we need to shut those down. Shut down. Oh, uh, that's pretty nice looking. The balance should be about the same, if a little bit lighter, in fact. Because we lost a ton of fuel on each side but we only gained about 0.7 ton of engine. I built a realism overhaul airplane install and I think given the look of the jet engines, because for realism overhaul like all the jet engines are based on the stock engines anyway and we'll take the stock plumes, I might throw in waterfall in that for these, for uh, just based on this. We'll see about the other plumes. The, the ones that I'm most skeptical of are the kerosene-oxygen ones. I want it to look like kerosene-oxygen plumes, which are vibrant, I guess you could say. Yeah, they, 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 they're complicated. Uh, we're not getting past the transonic region here. Okay, pushing the speed of sound here. Oh, uh, it's really sticky. This is why I originally put the wingtip boosters on, but I've omitted them this time. We'll dip down a little bit. Okay. Well, it's already going up all on its own. But I'll coax it up a little bit more. We are under high dynamic pressure here, going this fast at this altitude. There's still the rapier engines to try out. but maybe they won't be necessary. We're probably going to have a fuel imbalance between the liquid fuel and oxidizer, we'll see. At 15 kilometers, I'll start flattening out again. 
Otherwise, we're gonna run out of air too soon before we accelerate to our full potential. Okay, let's see how far we go. How fast we go. Uh, don't go down, though. I don't want to go down. Ah, I'm being forced down. Come on. I'm not allowed to go down a bit in the hope that it'll pick up some lift at higher speeds. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this a little bit better later. But we should make it. Oh, uh, even when I let go, it's losing speed there. There's a happy position where it's going up the right amount and accelerating forward the right amount. I'm not there yet. These are audibly losing power. I think we're just gonna light the rocket engines and go for orbit now. Oh, I guess staging like that isn't gonna work. Well, we'll get whatever juice we can from the ramjets. Drag at this altitude is too much, though. So we really need to go up soon. I don't think that's enough thrust to justify staying around here. Well, right around there will do for now. Eh, it's okay. The plume, I mean. For, uh, for vacuum engine. Change of color on the engine is interesting, on the plume. Well, we probably have enough for the rendezvous as well. And in fact, if I played my cards to right and we had the proper balance of liquid fuel and oxidizer, we could have had enough Delta V to get to Minmus direct too. Maybe. So, further developments may be possible. This is actually loosely based on an even older design that involved four Raptor engines and was featured in the Buck Kerman series long, long ago. Okay, well, that's a circular orbit for now. I don't know. Uh, the tanker is probably... I mean, I don't know which one I want having rendezvous with which. Um... Well, might as well demonstrate that this could rendezvous with a tanker in a random orbit. Not random orbit, but uh, higher orbit. So it's it's there. Okay, we are in render range, and ultimately the tanker has to do the docking because this does not have mod propellant or RCS. We're going to have to use this docking port, which is a little bit special because it's offset okay this is one of those times where I'm going to actually have the target turn towards us as well to simplify things because with space planes I don't like to have the rendezvousing vehicle go all over the place around it if we can avoid it and we're almost turned towards it we're going to have to remember to later control from the cockpit again, otherwise we're going to mess ourselves up. In fact, I'm going to turn towards it and then control from the cockpit so that we don't have further issues. I'm not too sure I'm sold on these thruster sounds. We used a lot of mop on just doing this. We have to also dock with the station at Minmus afterwards. Okay, we are docked. Alright, now the whole business of transferring all this fuel. We don't really need to top off the liquid fuel tank at this juncture, because we're just transferring to Jewel. And in that Jewel, we'll top off the fuel completely. So it looks like this tanker has more than we needed to top off. 
the spirit of gin, even if we did put some into the, the little liquid fuel tanks. So that business is accomplished. Flong is ready to go to Jewel. But is this the Jewel window still? I think maybe not. I think uh, we were off. So I'm going to leave Flong in orbit for an extended period of time until we get to the Jewel window. We tested this, but I forgot to time warp to the Jewel window. But Flong is just going to have to hang out. And uh, since Flong, I think, was a rescuee, that's, I mean, is, was certainly a rescuee because that's the only way we got Kerbals, uh, except for the first four. I assume she's used to hanging out for a while. So, yes, we will go to the tracking station and time warp to the Jewel window. Okay, we are at the window and I've already plotted our course for Jewel. As you can see, it's going to take 1,893 in order to make the Transjulian trans injection, maybe. Uh, but we have 2,501, so we should have enough to capture around Jewel and get to Lath somehow. A capture into Lath orbit, maybe some arrow breaking might be helpful. It depends on when we get refueled exactly. Uh, well, we really have to get refueled in Lath orbit, so because otherwise we won't be able to get off of Lath at the end. And there's the whole business of landing at the precise location, well not precise location, at the general location where a Lath stone might exist, so. But there's not a whole lot of land on Lath. So we have to think about that. Anyway, here we go. Let's hope for Flong's sake it all works out. Well, the Delta V reading must be incorrect because it's going up right now. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know what it's trying to measure here. We've got some Delta V, it's not entirely clear how much. Well, our Delta V is ticking down now. So, all is well there, I guess. Overall, it doesn't seem like we have that much more Delta V than I was expecting. So maybe it's reading correct now, or maybe it's still wrong. Okay, let's see what's going on at Jewel as we get close to making the approach. Alright, well, we were going to need a mid-course adjustment no matter what, so... There we have that, and just for formality's sake, I'll extend the antenna uh, for long-range operations, and let's plot the mid-course adjustment. That's a lathe encounter, but that's a crash course at lathe. Okay. Well, I mean, if we get into orbit around Leif, it doesn't super duper matter what inclination around Leif we're at. Eventually, we're going to land. So that will get us into orbit around Jewel and Leif. Probably fine tune that inclination. But do we really want to be equatorial? We might not hit the biome that we need if we're equatorial anyway. So, if we do that, and we wanted to manually capture at Leif immediately, how much would it cost? 900. So, error breaking may be necessary, but what would be a good height for that? That's an interesting question, isn't it? The bare minimum, we could... Well, no, with the mid-course adjustment, we can't do it. It's really tight. It's really close, though. But, yeah. Maybe some light error breaking might be good. But let's just pass on that particular node for now. And we need to send over a refueler for this, because when it gets to Leif, it needs to top itself off before landing. So it can't immediately try and land somewhere. That would be bad. It would never get off of Leif again. Well, I mean, we could cook up something, but probably not. And... So it needs to just capture lightly and then rendezvous with something that can refuel it. So that is what we're going to launch now. Okay, so for our fuel transfer vehicle around Jewel, we've got a somewhat extended version of the fuel transfer vehicle we had between Minmus and Kerbin. So we have basically the same top. It is currently unfueled because it's supposed to pick up the fuel, 
from the drilling unit currently around Paul. And we have extra liquid fuel tanks and extra engines because we will want to do burns a little bit quicker with this than we were doing with the Minmus mission. Uh, we Especially the trans dual injection burn. So this will limit the amount of time it takes to do that. Right now we're on sea level delta V. With it empty it has 5,660 meters per second with the four engines and all this fuel and uh, hopefully it'll have, I mean, it will have a decent amount when it's fully fueled. So we will send a fully fueled version over to Jewel as well, but this is not the one. <laughs> so this is the one that's empty and will pick up fuel from Paul. And we have a Communitron 88-88. I think just one will do, right? Um, hmm. I counterbalanced it with a magnetometer and uh, a gravioli detector. We've got the gravioli detector because potentially you want this to be the satellite in equatorial orbit of Val for a little while. Uh, but hmm, maybe I should have more than one of the Commutron 88. I think I'll take off the magnetometer and actually, well, it really won't matter. Uh, we'll have two Commutron 88-88s. They are combinable. So, yeah, that might be safer. A little bit staggered, but we'll go with it. I'll move this little guy up. Okay, and I've got extra mop repellent because it sure seemed like we were using mop repellent a little bit quickly. And you know what? I'm going to put some more RCS ports too. Mm, well, that might bump. I mean, that might blow at the Commutron. We'll just go with it, though. Okay, so that's that. And then we're going to try our mainsail launcher again, the one with four mainsails and recoverability, potentially. We'll see how that works out. Oh, it occurs to me that um, this bottom bit won't be recoverable if we totally fuel up the next fuel transfer vehicle. We might have to add boosters. We'll see about that. Okay, so I have auto strutted and we'll see whether recovery works out for the launch vehicle, but at least we should be able to get this big unit on its way and it should be worthwhile to have the nerves because we will use it repeatedly. Okay, let's go. It is a proud looking rocket and... Yep, we are underfueled with the fuel transfer portion. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Well, that's what the mainsails look like with the waterfall effects. Ah, no. This is too clean for a Carolox plume, I think. Oh, so Real Plume did the smoke effects too, I think. I like that it's got the gas generator exhaust, though. And also the engine light effect on the on the bottom end of the rocket is nice. I don't know, it's weirdly pulsing right now. In this phase of flight. I definitely don't like it like this. Yeah, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me at this point in the atmosphere for these kinds of engines. I mean, you've seen Falcon 9 launch and that sort of thing. Or an F1. It doesn't look like this. Alright, well I'm gonna temporarily go to low thrust so I can do fairing step safely. Alright. I did do clamshell. Oh, three-way, it's uh, Titan style. A low thrust is not too bad. But still. Uh, uh, for this kind of engine, or a Carolox engine, I still think Real Plume has it better. Comms are good. In fact, uh, too good. Those two commsats should be separated from each other. We need to reposition them. That's part of our problem. They got smushed together. They drifted after a little while. Oh no, did I take... Uh, I, I, I might have accidentally removed the radiators and failed to put them back on. They might have been on specific tanks that I took off. Well, shucks. Well, we'll see what happens with this one. Okay, well, let's separate off the mission. Oh, it's ready. Yep, 
no oxidizer or anything. But let's see about this. I'm gonna arm the shoots right away. They are armed. At the same longitude as the Woomerang launch site, we will do our retro burn, making sure that we're not gonna bump the mission. That might be too low, because we've got the big shoot, uh, big heat shield this time. So I'm gonna inflate that. And we're gonna hope that we can jettison it at an opportune time. Gonna move some fuel down. Okay, we have some heating. The Werner firing is actually pretty annoying. <laughs> we have full comms right now with something. Oh, uh, it's going sideways. It's going sideways, but it's slower now. Hopefully it's not too bumpy. We will wait for full deployment this time. Okay, full deployment brings us to less than 6 meters per second, 5.2. And the heat shield, jettison heat shield. Ooh, they wiggled, wow. Don't come back, please don't come back. Okay, it's smacked into the ground and exploded. Let's try and be gentle about it. Oh no, it's leading us astray. Oh gosh, I didn't mean that to do that. Oh. Okay, recover. Alright. Totally legit. Let's get the mission over to Jewel, and then we'll send one up with fuel. With full fuel, so it doesn't have to pick it up at Paul, just in case that for some reason doesn't work out for us. Okay, we've got our plot. It's the same basic deal, except it's going to take a little bit longer, though not too long because we've got four of these. Okay, and go with the Nerva Plume. Uh, It's okay. Well, at least they don't seem to be overheating yet, so we're in good shape without the radiators. I don't suppose the gravioli detector can do anything new, no. But we haven't done recovery around Earth, apparent not Earth, Kerbin, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this plume has sort of a more cartoony, low poly feel to it. Stylized? I think the word I'm looking for is stylized. A stylized look to it. Okay, we went a little bit further, but we'll just correct that on the mid-course adjustment. Tylo's in an inconvenient place, but Leif had been good for the space plane. But yeah, whenever I try and force an encounter with a radial burn, doesn't make it easy for me to get on the correct side for capture at all. I've noticed. Uh, but right now we're crashing into Lathe, and that would be a problem. But we might be able to fix that later on. So, alright. I mean, we could just manually capture around Jewel, it might be easier. But we can do this correction initially. So this is on its way. Let's get a fully fueled one and add some boosters to that mainsail thing and see if we can manage it. Alright, see, this is the problem with the stock SRBs. They just don't provide enough thrust. This should obviously work. I mean, we, we've got tanks like this for the mainsails. Why, why can't these provide enough thrust to lift it? I mean, they're, they're SRBs for heaven's sakes. They don't, they barely get more thrust than the main sails themselves. What sense, what logic does that make? It's crazy. It is so sad. Thrust weight ratio 0.83, it can't lift them off. This was a very, very good idea. But no. Um, 1.15 with the four Clydesdales. 
But that well, that was more than I really wanted to go with. It's overdoing it. I think what I'm gonna do is have a large number of small SRBs that won't require separatrons. Might be the best thing. Thumpers, lots of thumpers. Doing their best caster impression. That doesn't look like it's enough Delta V though. Everything else is too darn long. Maybe we should just go with a different launcher. Okay, well, we've got a peculiar setup here. I decided to try out the Mastodons. Uh, so we've got three of those at the bottom. Uh, I've got sort of a taper here, sort of Soyuz-ish, uh, to have a better flow with the boosters, if you will. And uh, two Clydesdales to help get us off the ground. Not the most efficient thing, but it's not that expensive. Well, it's it's okay. And also we have an upper stage with Wolfhound to uh, help things out. I'm not entirely sure how much Delta V it has because we've got an engine, um, whatchamacallit, mount, what, what, what are they called again? Anyway, we've got one of those engine plates. We've got an engine plate there, so that's complicating matters. But we are fully fueled and throttle up and go. I ended up using three Mastodons simply because we didn't need more thrust to weight ratio and I didn't want to carry the extra mass. Delta V wise we're expecting that the Wolfhound will finish orbit and start our burn towards Jewel. So the core stage will deorbit. Well at least the SRB plumes aren't too bad more turbulent. Alright, that should be the boosters off. I mean, no, I, I think we need more. The SRE plumes were closer to an F1 plume than this is. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's some resemblance, but well, it looks like we actually have enough to make orbit on this stage. Probably the the engine plate was complicating the calculation. Okay, well, let's get rid of the fairings. Fairing set. That's not too bad for a thrall down plume. I'd like a bit more of that style earlier on. Okay, well, we almost used all of it. Let's have it go up till there for disposal and wolfhound time. Wolfhound time. Well, it's reading more delta V than it did before. That's fine. We are going to make our transfer and this will wrap it up for this episode. So we'll handle the mid course adjustments and arrivals next time. No, not focus view. Well, we'll take that for now and make uh, an adjustment later. Uh, sure is estimating a long burn time. Darned efficient engines always have these long burns. Yeah, uh, the way we're pointing isn't particularly wonderful, but it'll be alright. Okay, we are on escape. It is in fact a long burn. We still have the nuclear stage to do part of it. Okay, here we go. Magenta plume time. Okay, I get the feeling we might have overburned quite a lot, so let's check the map here. Nope, we're still going. Okay, seeing when our encounter is. There it goes. And stop. All right. Make course adjustment plotting. And I think we might as well just go ahead and park it at Lathe right away. Well, that doesn't look too bad. That gets us into orbit around Jewel as well. Okay, and probably the capture will be within our budget. So this is on its way. So we've got two refuelers, one with all the fuel, and a space plane on their way to Jewel to do all the missions that we were supposed to do 
Uh, let's see. Oh, and let's remember to return to Kerbin fl from a flyby of Paul. That's another thing. <laughs> yeah, we have to do that with the space plane too. So yeah, all sorts of complications. That's a different thing. The Val deal. This also has the Gravioli detector just in case. We need to transmit data from the surface of Lathe and do Lathe things. All right. So we will see if that ends up being possible with the space plane in the next video. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.